Who? Candace? Hi, Jerry. How are you? Hi there. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Where are you? I'm actually in Northern California. Congratulations oh. on the big win. I'm near Sacramento. Oh, good, good. <clears throat> well, thank you. Well, Sacramento is going to be better this year, I think. First I'm excited. <clears throat> thank you so much. I'm <clears throat> so looking forward to... The well, State War is repeating in 2016. Well, you can root for us. We're going to be good again. We're hopeful that we will be fortunate like we were last year and uh, create a lot of excitement in the Bay Area, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, you're one of the greatest NBA players of all time and currently an executive board member of the Golden State Warriors who won their first NBA title in 40 years. What is your outlook for the 2015-2016 NBA season? Well, I think it's going to be a great season, and the West is it's going to be loaded, of course. Uh, Oklahoma City gets all their players back from injuries last year. You have them, the Warriors, the uh, Spurs, the, the Rockets, uh, the Clippers. Uh, all those teams are really going to be good. So it's going to be a task to get back to where we were before. But, uh, you know, we have a young team. We're capable. We should get better. Uh, the one thing we need to do is maintain the focus we had last year. We're the number one defensive team in the league. We were also the number one offensive team. So if we can replicate that again, it, it should be another great year for us. Well, we're definitely rooting for all of you in, Port excuse me, in Northern California. Well, can you tell us? Oh, go ahead. No, I, I was just sort of thank you because uh, it's created a lot of excitement in the Bay Area, that's for sure. And I'm sure down even in the Sacramento it has to also, even with the Kings there. Absolutely, it definitely has. And can you tell us about your experience with AFib? Why is it important for you to spread the word about stroke risk? Well, first of all, I was diagnosed with AFib uh, at age 55 years of age. Uh, you know, they, they describe it as an irregular heartbeat. But the more information I found about it, the more I talked to the doctors, the thing that scared me most, obviously, was the risk for strokes. And, um, you know, I partnered with uh, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Billie Jean King's part of this uh, campaign to make people aware of what they can do to protect themselves from stroke risk. And uh, there's a website myafibrisk.com, they can go on there and there's eight simple questions, okay, that you have to answer. Um, and by the way, I'm a two if anyone would like to know. But uh, once you have that information and uh, take it to your doctor and, and again, the most important thing is continue to take your medication and also everyone who has it has to take a blood thinner. Uh, Friday of last week, the FDA uh, came out and announced how important it was for everyone, how uh, almost mandatory that you take uh, bl uh, blood thinners. And uh, we're here to spread the word about it. Uh, you know, sometimes as an athlete, you don't want to talk about your own particularly uh, medical issues, and particularly when you're playing. But I think this is a service for me because I do have a voice, and uh, I, I think it's important that people know that they can seek help and they can help uh, to do anything that they can to alleviate the risk of a stroke. And obviously, blood thinners are really, really important. And what are the signs and symptoms of AFib, and what's the link between AFib and stroke? Well, for me, uh, uh, when, I, when I was a player, I, the doctor uh, said I had an irregular heartbeat. And I used to hyperventilate during games, and they'd, it looked stupid, but I would have a plus, I mean, a paper bag, a brown paper bag, and I'd blow into that, blow into that, and finally they said it would help. I didn't know it would help. But uh, it just feels like your, your heart is racing out of, your, out of your chest. Some people don't feel this, and this is why this is kind of a silent disease at times. I do feel it, and when I'm really an AFib uh, and, and going too fast, I have to really slow down. I have to try to Again, uh, talk to the doctor, do anything I need to do, different than I'm doing, and they're always pretty reassuring as long as you take your medication. But there's six million people in this country that have been diagnosed with AFib. One in three of those people is gonna have a stroke risk regardless of what they're taking. And uh, if you've been around hospitals, you've been around your friends who've had strokes, it's devastating. And I wanna do everything that I can because I'm still active, I love to be active. Uh, I don't want to have that, that problem. And that's why I'm doing everything, and more importantly, to try to get the word out to people that you need to have yourself checked. And again, you can go on myafibrisk.com, assess your stroke risk, and talk to your doctor, and make sure you take your blood thinners. And can AFib affect people at any age? Uh, well, I'm sure that there are people who have. I mean, they diagnose it with high school athletes and uh, as people, as the doctor's care has gotten better and, and people are taking uh, 
uh, taking all kind of, uh, uh, particularly a heart, uh, heart, uh, oh, what is heart uh, test, uh, that these things are uh, discovered at a much earlier age today. And once you know about it, then you know the risk you're taking, and it can be treated I even if you're young. But uh, as I say, it's devastating. It's uh, it's it's not. I've known two or three of my friends who have had strokes, and uh, it's hard to believe the same people that I've known for so many years uh, that, are, that are so restricted in what they can or cannot do. Absolutely. I, I witnessed my grandfather having a stroke when I was eight years old, and it's something I will never forget. Well, as I, as I say, again, this is, this is something that uh, any campaign like this is to make people more aware, and that's why you need to go have regular checkups with your doctor. Uh, I know I go see my doctor uh, once a month. Uh, it's important to me to uh, know if my condition has changed and also it need, to, need to know if there needs to be any additional um, uh, meds that I might have to take. So it's really, really important that people uh, understand the risk involved. Absolutely. And what can people do to help support your cause and where can they go for more information? Well, again, uh, it's myafibrisk.com. Um, it's, uh, you, you go on that, and there also an, uh, and you can answer these eight questions, and you, you'll find out if you're at risk, that's for sure. But another important thing out there is an organization that, uh, called Mended Hearts. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization. These people volunteer their time. They go to the hospitals where people have had uh, heart uh, problems, and they go in there. There's a, there's a support group, and uh, they're very, very valuable, and we're, we're pleased to be able to contribute money to them also. Well, thank you so much, Jerry. I truly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with me today. Have a great afternoon and best of luck this season. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.